Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm making an ice dyed geode shirt. My shirt has been washed and dried, soaked in a soda ash solution for at least 20 to 30 minutes. I wrung it out in my panda spin dryer and so it's just barely damp. I also have it turned inside out. To begin my geodes, I'm going to grab an area where I'd like the center to be and then lift it up a little bit, give it a shake, and I start tying my geodes from the bottom. I tie from the bottom out to the end. I use sinew to tie them so that the dye can't get underneath that waxed coating and those areas will be white. You can put as many or as few lines on each one of your geodes as you'd like to. I personally like to vary the width of my lines. I don't like to make them all the same, but you can do whatever you want. Remember geodes are part of nature, so they never look exactly the same each time. I'm starting another geode up toward the shoulder of the shirt. So if you notice, if when I grab the part that is going to be the middle of the geode and I lift it up off the table, I start tying the bottom of the geode and part of that bottom of the geode is actually the back side of the shirt. I like for there to be more natural flow and movement, so I don't want to make a geode only stay on the front of the shirt or on the back of the shirt. I want it to be able to naturally flow on the back or the front of the shirt or on the shoulder of the shirt just wherever. I want it to look random. I know it can't be totally random, but I'd like for it to look a little more random. I'm going to continue this entire process until I have my shirt all tied up. After I have my entire shirt tied up, I'm going to set it aside for a couple of days and let it dry out really well. I feel like with thicker folds like this, whenever I dye them and they're partially damp, I don't get as good a color saturation as I do when they're dry. So I like to let these thicker folds go ahead and dry out before I dye them. Now that my shirt is dry, it's time to start applying the dye. I'm going to ice dye this one on a rack. So I have my rack over the top of a tub to catch any of the drips and the excess dye. And I'm going to build myself an ice barrier using some silicone cake molds. I will leave a link down in the description for the 
cake molds as well as the dye colors that I used and several other of the helpful tools that I use when I tie dye. To keep the silicone cake molds in place around my shirt, I'm going to use some clothes pins. I'm going to put them close to the cake molds and clamp them onto my rack. The area where the cake molds meet, I'm going to hold that together with a binder clip. Sometimes they measure out perfectly where you can attach them and it's a perfect fit. This time I'm going to use a binder clip to keep it nice and tight. I'm beginning down at the end with Baby Blue from Grateful Dyes. I'm going to put a small sprinkle of that at the very end of each one of my geodes. If you've watched any of my videos that I made before where I made a geode shirt, You'll know that sometimes I put the colors on fairly randomly. This time I decided I was going to do them in the same order, but I'm going to vary the widths of each of the lines of color that I do. So I'm not trying to make it perfect. Again, it's nature, and nature's not perfect. So I'm trying to make it look as natural as possible. The next color I'm using is Deep Space by Dharma Trading Company. Then I'm going back in with a little bit more of the baby blue. When I make a geode shirt, I generally go out to the internet and I find photos of geodes that I like the coloring of. Then I pull out all of my color swatches and try to match the colors in that photograph. Followed by Wedgwood Blue from Dharma Trading Company. Royal Blue from Custom Colors. A bit more of the Wedgwood. Some Lapis from Pro Chemical and Dye. A little bit more of the Deep Space from Dharma. A little bit more baby blue. Back to the Wedgwood. And ending with the royal blue from Custom Colors. Spilled a little bit of my dye powder, so I'm trying to get it off and onto the shirt. Then I'm going to give a generous sprinkle of the soda ash. I'm going to force a lot of water down through this shirt so that I can get the dye all the way through the shirt. 
So when I do that, the original soda ash that was in my shirt from the soak could potentially get washed out. That's why I put the extra soda ash on top. I want to make sure I have plenty of soda ash in there so that the dye reacts properly with the fabric. Now I'm going to layer on the ice. Here again, I want to put quite a bit of ice because I want to make sure I get the dye to go all the way through these thicker geodes. Now I'm going to add a layer of Ecru from Pro Chemical and Dye over the top. This color is kind of just a filler color. It gives a little extra depth to my shirt. I set my shirt aside and let the first layer of ice melt. After that first layer melted, this is what the shirt looks like. I gently lifted one of the geodes and checked to see whether or not the dye was going all the way through. It was doing really well, but I noticed there was quite a bit of dye left sitting on top. So I added another layer of ice and I let it go ahead and sit until that second layer had melted. And this is what the shirt looks like after the second layer melted. Since it forced most of the dye through, I went ahead and just left it and let it process for at least 24 hours. After I rinsed out the shirt, washed it and dried it, this is what it looks like. I really like the color combination and some of the color splits. I also like the kind of olive green and beige color. I think those are coming from the Ecru. I don't really know of another color that they could be coming from. Possibly a little bit out of the Wedgwood maybe. I don't entirely know, but I think it adds a pop to the shirt. I actually like that added dimension in there. That's partially the reason why I sprinkled a different color on top is just to kind of add a little extra dimension to the shirt. So if you guys are enjoying watching these videos, I sure would appreciate it if you would hit the big red subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.